Hi everyone, my name is Cristina Patuelli. I'm a professor at Pratt Institute in New York and the co-director of the Semantic Lab at Pratt, which is a research group which is currently collaborating with the Wixfield uh, Heritage Center on a Mellon-funded pro, uh, project called Lost Jazz Shrines of Brooklyn. So to start, let me give you a bit of context about the Semantic Lab at Pratt. We work with digital technologies applied to um, archives. More specifically, we use a new generation of technologies called linked open data that has a capability to connect information, entities, things in new ways, in ways which are often unexpected. This helps place historical data in complex interconnected contexts. And this has the potential to offer new perspectives, to trigger new understandings and interpretation of archival content. So the initial idea behind the ingest was of linking people through archival data with the goals to uncover the dense, uh, the dense web of relationships that tie together the jazz community and to use this technology to tell stories and to public, possibly foster new narratives. So the trigger for our project for Lean Jazz was this iconic photo where all the jazz musicians who were in New York City on August 12, 1958, are posing here for the cover of Esquire magazine. The photographer was the great Art Kane. But if we ask what relationships these musicians had with each other, who were close friends, who mentored, whom, who collaborated or toured together, just connecting these dots would require incredible effort with traditional archival research methods, which would involve sifting through piles of documents and digging into content to find relevant bits of information to compile and analyze. With um, our research project, we collected 54 oral histories, transcribed uh, interviews from archives across the country, from the Institute of Jazz at Rutgers University to Hamilton College, Smithsonian, etc. And we use tools like this one to automatically extract relevant entities from text and connect these entities. For us, the focus is on people. So the tool automatically encodes a relationship between an interviewee, like in this case, Mona Hinton, to um, any of the musicians mentioned in text. For example, in this case, Ella Fitzgerald, stating that the interviewee, the narrator, knows of Ella Fitzgerald. Because if someone mentioned someone else, we can be pretty confident that they have some level of knowledge, even if it's basic knowledge about that person. So this we have at the bottom of the slides, uh, the encoding, encoded version of this statement, Mona Hinton knows of Ella Fitzgerald. Now, with additional tools, we were able to further define, refine this relationship and make them more specific. For example, this crowdsourcing tool called 52nd Street presents the user, the volunteer, with passages in sequence and all the people mentioned in the, in the text on the left already extracted and available. And so that the user 
can identify the appropriate relationship between the interviewee and, and each of these persons mentioned and click on one of the course or one of these options the most appropriate relationship and their selection would be encoded as link data now the outcome of processing those primary sources is a link data set that describes relationship among musicians from knows of, as we said, but mentor of, collaborate with, play together, etc. Now, these data can be queried. They can be used by others in different applications. What makes uh, linked data, linked open data unique is that the data you produce are by design publicly available. So they are shareable, they are reusable, they can be taken by others and combined with other data in the same domain, ours is jazz or performances, music, or related domains. And this has happened already with a few international projects and national projects that have been reusing Link Jazz in combination with their discography and performance data to enrich and, and create new knowledge. Another way to leverage this data is through visualizations. Again, visualization powered by linked data. So here we have the visualization of the social network of jazz musicians. This is an interactive application. People can explore the data through navigation. You will see the link to the tool on the, on the bottom right. And, uh, and we have different configuration here. We have a macro high level view of the entire link data set, or you can zoom in and have a radial view of a specific musicians. By mousing over a musician, you can see a, a short bio from Wikipedia. You can listen to a clip from YouTube. But most importantly, you can go directly to the source of that stated connection. And you can go deep down to the specific passage that originated that relationship, providing context and a constellation of other entities that can also be represented and be useful for research. In this case, as you can see, the place, the city, Chicago, the, the, uh, the, the, the time periods and, and, and concepts and the venue. Now, each node of this network is a person, is a musician. And so we, we, we tend to think of each node as a crossroads of virtually infinite stories and an entry point to other collection. And as we, as a project has developed, you have to think that this project started in, in 2011, so um, it has already a long history for a digital project. And what we are doing now, we are uh, focused on exploring new perspectives, identifying hidden stories in the archives, and try to ask new and more complex questions to the data. For example, we put the spotlight, spotlight on women, which is a segment of the jazz community, which is definitely lesser represented and no need to elaborate here uh, in this picture in this photo or uh, out of 57 musicians only three were women 5.2 percent so when you work with data what is missing is often can be as revealing as what is there and 
as we process more interviews with women musicians, the names of other women musicians suddenly started to pop up exponentially. And this prompted us to dig deeper, especially my colleague, Karen Wang, who analyzed the distribution of mentions across the corpus of interviews based on gender, discovering that women mention more women. She created a view of the network through a gender lens. So you can see at a glance here, the gender disparity. You can analyze gender relationship of individual musicians. Here we are Mary Lou Williams with all her connections um, organized and described by gender, represented by gender, with the possibility to analyze a narrative surrounding a musician aggregated by gender. So we know it's for each passage who, um, who, who uh, which gender is um, the mention, the mention musician. And, uh, and this is particularly interesting for more complex types of analysis like discourse analysis. Um, and this is just an example of what can be done and this direction now and the experimentation continues with the lost just shrines of Brooklyn. And so more on this, we will learn more of this from my colleagues, Sarah and Zakia. Thank you.